gonna do a bonus one on St. Basil. I'll probably start doing a little bit more bonus bonus rounds on some of these church fathers. St. Basil is probably gonna outpace everybody though. Just being honest. <laughs> anyway, uh, I mean he's got an epic beard, so why not, right? Anyway, St. Basil the Great. If therefore there is any grace in the water, it is not from the nature of water, but from the Spirit's presence there, St. Basil the Great. He's talking about a sacrament of the church. He's talking about turning water into holy water, transforming it, transfiguring it into a sacrament, into a Eucharistic gift that the church offers, such as baptism, such as holy water. Now you can drink it, you can do what you want with holy water pretty much, but they have, um, they ha it has purpose. I mean, it obviously has purpose because it's healing, it's water. It comes from, I mean, water comes from God. Water is, is something that is definitely one of those things that not a whole lot of people can't explain. It's formless. It fits, it fills all things. Huh. So does God. So it makes it makes you kind of think about you know the nature of something like water. There is there is definitely grace in it, but it just doesn't come from nature itself. See, and that's where the Holy Spirit and the the energies of God fills the water and transfigures it into something that becomes a gift becomes a Eucharistic gift. And thanks be to God that that can happen. Thanks be to us that we can make it happen. So it's one of those things where it's that communion that creates us to be thankful to God. So then, so therefore, it creates those gifts and it creates those things that we can change the very nature of something to be in communion with God.